Thank you, brethren. Welcome one. Welcome all to our next series on messages to young people. Uh, today we are going to handle uh, the scripture as the only safeguard for the youths who are going to consecrate themselves uh, to be finishers of reformation, to be part of the movement that is going to finish the work. So allow me pray and then we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we honor your name, we glorify your name for your goodness. You're merciful, you're gracious. <laughs> this far you brought us, Lord, for one purpose, to glorify your name. We are here, Lord, we desire to learn from you. We pray, Lord, that uh, whatever is before us that you will want us to learn, may you give us a good environment, a stable network, a listening here that all that we're going to learn be a blessing to us. May your will be done, as some will be following online uh, live stream, and uh, some will also be with us. We pray, Lord, that all may be blessed, and your name be glorified in all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, thank you. And uh, today we want to uh, actually handle the word of God and see how the impact that it should have to our dear youths, the impact that it should have to our dear youths. So if you're able to see, uh, if you're able to see my screen, we are there, a word of God, the only safeguard for the young. The word of God, the only safeguard for the young. I want to draw attention and bring us back to some of the things we stressed yesterday. And uh, one of the things that we really considered yesterday is that the times we are living in. We are living in an evil time. And the enemy is easy uh, setting net for God's children and especially the youths because he understands, the devil himself understands the work that God requires the youths for, and the children for this time to be able to do. So he's busy out there uh, laying nets and uh, entangling a lot of youths, engaging them in a lot of things which are not necessary to be able to uh, occupy their time, not to be uh, doing what they should be doing. And so uh, that is where we will still begin uh, today, the work that Satan is doing in these last days and uh, his last efforts. So we are told in the book Great Controversy 510 that from the days of Adam to our own time, our great enemy, that is Satan, has been exercising his power to oppress and destroy that has been the work of Satan since he was cast down here. He has been oppressing and destroying God's children. But listen keenly what he is now doing. Now, very interesting, he is now preparing for his last campaign against the church. Uh, so the devil uh, is not only now oppressing and de destroying God's people, as that has been his work, but he has even put more efforts, uh, is putting more efforts, and we'll be able to see channels and means that he is working to uh, destroy the church of God, especially the youths and even the elderly, so that they will not be able to uh, do the work that they should be doing. So he, he is now preparing for his last campaign against the church. And he says, all who seek to follow Jesus will be brought into conflict with this relentless force. So uh, being that uh, we are going to be brought into a uh, conflict, we are going to be brought into conflict with this relentless force. So the question comes, how will we as youths who are forming this part of this movement will be able to uh, protect ourselves, we'll have a safeguard. That is why we are considering 
the scriptures being the only safeguard that will guard us from the campaigns that the enemy are doing to be able to destroy the youths and even the elderly, but I'll specify the youths who are who should be finishing the work of God. Remember yesterday we said that the church is uh, languishing for the work uh, for the want of youths who will at least in the course to be able to uh, to be able to revive, to be able to uh, bring back the, the things that has been to waste, bring reformation. It says, the more nearly the Christian imitates the divine pattern, the more surely will he make himself a mark for certain attacks. So the dear youths are willing to enlist in the course of God. They want to live a Christ-like life and exert its, its influence to the world as they proclaim the three angels' message. But Satan also say, uh, sees these and he sets marks for them and they need to be safe. What is it that is going to make them safe? All who are actively engaged in the course of God, we saw that the youths in these days, Tendai, listening, and any other person, they need to engage in the course of God. So he says, those who engage in the course of God, seeking to unveil the deception of the evil one and to present Christ before the people. This is the work of the youth as we saw it yesterday. We'll be able to join in the testimony of Paul in which he speaks of serving the Lord with holy humility of mind with many tears and temptation. The people of God are directed to the scripture as the safeguard against the influence of false teachers and the delusive powers of spirit of darkness. Satan employs every possible device. Listen, we will be able to uh, see issues affecting the youths. And one of these issues are things that, uh, or devices that, they, that Satan is using to be able to uh, prevent the youths from doing that which they should be used. So he says, Satan employs every possible device to prevent men from obtaining a knowledge of the Bible. For its plans, Remember, we are looking at the work that Satan is doing. Uh, he, for its plain utterance reveal his deception. At every revival of God's work, at every revival of God's work, as the youths will be revived to be to join up and be part of the final movement with the final message in this final time, uh, Satan also will be arose. And he is now putting forth his uttermost efforts for a final struggle against Christ and his followers. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. Uh, so closely we live, uh, counterfeit, his counterfeit resembles the truth that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scriptures. So it is by the Holy Scriptures that youths, children, who we saw yesterday should be acquainted well with the three angels' message, are going to combat the workings of the enemy. By their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be tested. Those who endeavor to obey all the commandments of God will be opposed and derided. They can stand only in God in order to endure trial before them. They must understand the will of God as revealed in his word. Wow, this is what the youths should understand the will of God as revealed in His Word. They can honor Him only as they have a right conception of His character, government, and purpose, and act in accordance with them. None, listen keenly, none but those who have fortified their minds with the truths of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. So Satan is doing his last campaign against God's people, against those who want to uh, be true to God, firm to principle, uh, live a life, exert a life that uh, will have an influence for good in uh, proclaiming the three angels' message. And uh, they have to fortify their minds with truth for, for them to be able to stand against the last conflict that Satan is having against the church. To every soul will come the searching test. Shall I obey God rather than man? The deceptive hour is even now at hand. So Satan is really working. 
are our feet planted on the rock of God's immutable word. So every youth feet should be planted on the rock of God's immutable word. Are we prepared to stand firm in defense of the commandments of God and, and the faith of Jesus? That happens when uh, we are being planted on the rock of God's immutable word. We will stand firm in defense of the commandments of God. But God will have a people upon the earth to maintain the Bible and the Bible only. You should be a part of this. We saw that in the 16th century, uh, the reformation that was brought by uh, the Waldenses, the Bible and the Bible alone was their only safeguard. Uh, it was their only standard. And we told that from their time, light has been shining forth and forth for God's people. And we who are living in the last days are more advantaged because we have better options to understand the word of God. And so he says, uh, the word of God, the Bible alone should be the standard of all doctrines and basis of all reforms. The opinions of land made, the deduction of science, the creeds or decisions of ecclesiastical councils, as numerous and discont uh, discontent as are the churches which they represent, the voice of the majority, not one, nor all of these should be regarded as evidence for, for or against any point of religious faith. So all these things, the ecclesiastical councils, the creeds, the, and the learned men, science, all these things should not uh, be regarded as evidence of religious faith. It is the Bible and the Bible alone that should define, should be the basis of our, all our reforms and doctrines. Uh, now, let's get to this common verse. Uh, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? That is Psalms 119 verses 9. He says, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So the, only, uh, the, the way of a young man is made pure by taking heed according to the word of God. Thy testimony, Psalms 119, 121, thy testimony are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. 119 verses 130 of Psalms. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And in bracket, the young. So all the young people, the children, we saw yesterday that they should be well acquainted with the word of God, with the, uh, the, the last message of mercy that you're having and should be taking to the world. They says the entrance of God's word gives light and it gives understanding even to the simple. It's not only to the learned men, it's not only to those who have been to theologian schools, but even the young men and the children should be in a position to understand the word of God because the, that word brings light and uh, that is what we need. We are told in the book Steps to Christ 89, paragraph 2, that the Bible was not written for the scholars alone. On contrary, it was designed for the common people, the simple people, the children, the youths. The great truths necessary for salvation are made clear as noonday, and none will mistake and lose their way except those who follow their own judgment instead of the plain revealed will of God. So the common people, the youths, the children, uh, I believe they're under the common people, uh, they are able to understand the Bible. Because why? Uh, the truths that are necessary for our salvation are made clear as noonday, but they have to be diligent students of the scriptures to be able to understand this. The, the old Bible is a revelation of the glory of God in Christ. And so when the youths will uh, get into the word of God, when they will read the word of God, when they will have understanding uh, allow the word of God to give understanding, to give them understanding, then they will reveal the glory of God. 
And that is part of the three angels message as it sounds into the loud cry, uh, being, being able to reveal the glory of God to the world. Received, believed, obeyed, it is the great instrumentality in transforming our character. You see, the problem that is in the world today, the, all the evil things, it's because the word of God has no position in our society today. There are a lot of evil characters, there are a lot of evil stuff that people are not comfortable with, and more so amongst the youth. The reason why the, the word of God has not been received, believed, obeyed, or even known. Many youths are careless, they are indolent uh, concerning the word of God. But until they will be get acquainted with the word of God, they cannot understand what God really wants for them. It is the grand stimulus, the constraining force that quickens the physical, mental, spiritual power. So today, men, youth, children are sick mentally, physically, spiritually, because they don't understand, they don't have any clue concerning the word of God and directs their life into right channels. This is uh, the quote uh, I really love in Ministry of Healing, 452. He says, the reason why the youth have in the, and even those of mature years, so this issue doesn't really, con uh, not, not only concerns the youth, but we see even those of mature years are so easily led into temptation and sin. We've seen the work that Satan is doing in these last days is, is, is in the business of uh, destroying, killing, people, spiritually. And the reason why all these things are happening is that they do not study the word of God and meditate upon it as they should. So this gives every child, every youth, no one is uh, left out to study the word of God because by studying the word of God, we cannot be so easily led into temptation and sin and led into the snares of the enemy. Uh, it continues to say, the lack of firm decided willpower, which is manifested in life and character, result from neglect, result from neglect of this, uh, neglect of the sacred instruction of God's work. They do not by honest effort direct their mind to that which would inspire pure holy thoughts, thought and divert it from that which impure and untrue. There are few who choose the better part, who sit at the feet of Jesus, as did Mary, to learn of the divine teacher. Few treasure his word in the heart and practice them in the life. So very few. I pray that our youths will find joy in being amongst those who will find joy in the word of God. Those who will fortify their mind with the word of God. It says the truths of the Bible received will uplift mind and soul. If the word of God were appreciated as it should be, both the young and old would possess an inward rectitude, a strength of principle that will enable them to resist temptation. Yeah, so many youths today are lose their so easily led into temptation because they do not study the word of God as it should be. They do not appreciate the word of God, which can give strength of principle. They can stand firm to principle as Joseph, not to be easily led into temptation because they have the word of God with them. Cite the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life. To such means to look diligently for something which has been lost. Search for the hidden treasures in God's word. You cannot afford to be without them. Study the difficult passages, comparing verse with verse, and you will find that scripture is the key which unlocks scripture. Those who prayerfully study the Bible go from each such wiser than they were before. Amen. Uh, 
this is the source of uh, right education, the Bible. Some of their difficulties have been solved, solved, for the Holy Spirit has done the work spoken of in the 14th chapter of God, the comforter of God, the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So, <clears throat> how we should study the word of God prayerfully diligently searching because every passage we go we are told we will become wiser than before because it's the word of god is the scripture which is able to make us wise paul tells timothy that you thou has known the scripture from the childhood which are able to make you wise unto salvation so i pray that and by the way timothy was a youth Paul did not only instruct him to do this, do that, but Paul led him to search for himself the scriptures which were able to uh, make him have eternal life, receive salvation. Uh, not with this, nothing worth having obtained without earnest, persevering effort. In business, only those who are, have a will do see success result. Without honest toil, we cannot accept to obtain a knowledge of spiritual things. So here, youths are not only called to do a superficial work with the word of God. They are required to be intelligent, to be diligent, and uh, take their time, consecrate their time, study the word of God as it should be. And not only study, but also meditate upon the word of God. Have the text in the memory whenever it is possible. And that is when they will be able to go against the odds of the enemy. Uh, yeah, it says, without honest toil, we cannot accept to obtain a knowledge of spiritual things. Those who obtain the jewels of truth must dig for them as minor digs for precious or hidden. Uh, in the earth. So this is not just calling the youths to engage in morning devotions and family evening devotions. No, beyond that, the youths are required to study for themselves. The children should be led to study the word of God for themselves, to be able to uh, uh, have the text in the memory and uh, commit the text into the memory. And not only that, uh, the Bible, we are, the word of God we are told are able to make them wise and be able to make them have an experience as Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and knowing that which is right for them to do. We'll continue much concerning that as we'll considering developing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, those who work indifferently and half-heartedly will never succeed. Yeah, so there are a lot of superficial work. We, the youths are very comfortable with just uh, having reading devotions and they are done and all this. But we are told that you have to work indifferently and half-hearted. Uh, we cannot, if we work indifferently and half-heartedly, we cannot succeed. Young and old should read the word of God. And not only should they read it, but they should study it with diligent, honest, praying, believing, and searching. Thus, they will find the hidden treasure, for the Lord will quicken their understanding. So those whom the Lord will see honestly, uh, those whom the Lord will see honestly seeking uh, the word of God, uh, honestly seeking to know the truth, the Lord will lead them into the truth. The Lord will give, lead them into the truth. We are first entering the perils of the last days when views which conflict with the word of God will be presented by men of giant intellects. And we ought to be able to show the falsity of their claims. Our children is into this. Our children also should be thoroughly furnished with the Bible truth 
so that they will be not moved by every new doctrine that is presented in their ear. You see, uh, our faith, our understanding of the scriptures as dear children and youth, uh, our beliefs, our doctrines should not only be sustained by our parents, but even us, we should take responsibility and uh, be able to give reasons for our faith, be able to furnish ourselves with the truth as it is in the word of God. And uh, yeah, we be able to stand for every doctrine that we believe. And so any error we can easily, or we can combat without necessarily having to have our parents, yeah, even the children should be able to give reason for their faith from the Bible. They should be able to give reason of their faith from the Bible. That is very interesting. Uh, and the parents should take note of that. And even the children should not fumble and stumble when their faith is brought into test. They have to study diligently the word of God and be able to give reason for that faith. Let me repeat, our children also should be thoroughly furnished with Bible truth so that they will not be moved by every new doctrine that is presented in their ear. It go, we continue. We desire that the youth shall be able to say, we have become familiar with the scripture. And we see that it is of the highest importance that we be obedient to the truth of God found in his word. We decide that the youth shall be able to say, we have become familiar with the scriptures. Well, just as the, the world dancers, they were familiar with the scriptures. They were able to stand against the rulers of those times, those who had went to had gone to theologian schools. And they were able to see that indeed he was familiar with the scriptures. They were so familiar with the scriptures. And thus should be with the youths who are also forming part, being part of the movement that is going to finish the work of God. They should be familiar with the scriptures. And we see that it is it is of the highest importance that we be obedient to the truth of God found in his word. So not just being familiar with the word of God, that is to have the head knowledge, but allowing the word of God to have influence in their life so that... Uh, uh, they will be obedient according to that word. There is also a danger of youths being able to uh, have the knowledge of the truth, have the knowledge of the word of God, but it's just a head knowledge which does not uh, work in them. The word of God should be able to work in us effectively to produce uh, fruits that can be seen. Uh, to be able to reveal the glory of God to the world, as uh, as we will see here. So that should be uh, the burden of the youths, that they will be familiar with the scriptures, and then we'll see, uh, uh, and we'll have, be obedient according to the word of God. You want the little children to understand the Bible and grow up in the knowledge of truth. So as the children grow up, they should grow up in the knowledge of the truth. The truth is the word of God. It says in John 17, 17, uh, that uh, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so the truth of the word of God should be uh, highly esteemed in the family circle that the children, uh, as they grow, they grow in that knowledge. And we as parents do not wish to be found among those who do not see the necess the necess the necessity of their children understanding the scriptures for themselves. Uh, one of the interesting lessons that we'll, be, we'll see is uh, uh, children uh, building relationship with God, their personal relationship. 
which is not based on maybe their fathers, their elderly, uh, their elderly and their parents. And then we are told that the, the parents need to see the necessity. Uh, they should see the necessity of their children understanding the scriptures for themselves. It's very, very key. And it's very, it's something that is needful that parents should strive as much as possible to let the children, uh, to let the children uh, have understanding of the word of God for themselves. And who are therefore negligent and cause their children to be neg negligent. But we want to be honest in these matters and search the scriptures and see that our children search them. Christ says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And they they are they which testify, uh, which testify, sorry, they are they which testify about me. Search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. We should become firm in truth. The word of God which testify of him in whom are all our hopes everlasting life are centered. If you would know how to imitate the spotless life and character of Christ, obtain a knowledge of him as presented in the word of God. Amen. I'll repeat there. We should become firm in the truth. The word of God, which testify of him, in whom all our hopes of everlasting life are centered, if you would know how to imitate the spotless life and character of Christ, if you want your children, if the dear youths desire to imitate the spotless life of the man Jesus Christ, of his character, then we should obtain a knowledge of him as presented in the word of God. So the word of God brings us the character of Jesus Christ that if we really desire to imitate his character, if we really desire to be like him, then we have to consider the knowledge of him as presented in the word of God. Wonderful and uh, so nice. We, we know we know the dangers and temptation that beset the youth at the present time. We know the dangers and uh, and temptation that beset the youth at the present time are not few nor small, and we understand that every means that can be employed to repress sin and to encourage righteousness should be entered into uh, most earnest by the youths themselves. We live in the age when the uh, when to resist evil calls for constant watchfulness and prayer. We are living in the darkest period of this world history. And for us to resist the evil one, to resist evil, it calls for us to concentrate ourselves to be watchful and prayerful. Be sure that the youth that do not have interest in the word of God, that do not uh, uh, really love uh, to meditate upon the word of God, the youths who are not prayerful, we are sure that they will be caught into the evil, uh, with the evil of this world. We, we are living in the age when to resist evil cause for constant watchfulness and prayer. God's precious word is the standard for youth who will be loyal to the king of heaven. So the standard for every youth and child who will want to stand against the evils of this time is the word of God, nothing else. That is the only safeguard that will prevent the youth from falling. Remembering that uh, when they will give themselves to be workers together with Christ, and we said being workers together with Christ doesn't necessarily mean having to stand in the pulpits and uh, maybe having to have a microphone to preach. 
Being laborers together with Christ is to live a life that pleases him. And that life that you live that pleases him will exert an influence to others, which will be a power for good uh, for them. And that you will be a uh, laborer together with Christ. And many other means that uh, we learn for you and you will learn by your experience also how you can be laborers together with Christ. And so when we give ourselves to be laborers together with Christ, we are marked by Satan. And the only safeguard is the word of God. God's precious word is the standard for the youth who will be loyal to the king of heaven. Let them study the scriptures. Let them commit text after text to the memory. And this uh, reminds me of the experience of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was able to read the scriptures. He committed the scriptures to the memory that he was able to cast to the enemy. If we read uh, Matthew 4.4, 4. I'll just check Matthew 4.4 4 as we continue. Uh, Matthew uh, 4, verses 4, the Bible reads, the Bible reads, but he answered, this is Christ Jesus, he answered and said, it is written. So he was well acquainted with the scriptures, and this was uh, what was the safeguard? What, what protected him from uh, the temptation of the evil one? He said, it is written, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. That is what can, uh, that is the only safeguard for the youth. The, that says the Lord, the written word of God. Let them study the scriptures. Let them commit text after text memory and acquire a knowledge of what the Lord has said. And then let his word be strictly obeyed. When tested and in trial, when tested and in trial, let the youth spread out the word of God before them and with the humble hearts. Just as when Christ was tempted and he was in a trial, he cast the word of God. Let the youth spread out the word of God before them and with humble hearts and in faith. Seek the Lord for wisdom and to find out his way and for strength to walk in it. The Lord loves his children and with a devotion stronger than that of a mother for a child. For in response to this question, can a woman forget her child? The Lord by his prophet says, she may forget, yet will I not forget you. So the Lord's promise are very sure. He will not forget the dear children. He will not forget the dear youths, but they need to consecrate their, their life to him. Uh, they should uh, have the knowledge of him from the scriptures. Uh -huh. Almost coming to an end. I feel a special interest for our youth. That is personally me and the prophet also. Uh, she also wrote that she really feels a special interest in our youth. And I believe she, these were inspired writings. And the Lord uh, has a special interest for the youth who are interested in the truth. So I, I'm anxious that you should press your way forward and upward in order that you shall reach the standard of Christian character that is revealed in the word of God. Christian character is not mere goodness, uh, is revealed in the word of God. For you to be able to have, uh, to be Christ-like youth, to be Christ-like child, then we can develop that character uh, based in the word of God. Yeah, mere goodness in the home, it's good, but that really can. We have children who are obedient to their parents, they are loyal, but they do not have characters which has been transformed by the word of God. And so our characters should be formed, should be uh, uh, according to the word of God. Let the word of God be your guidebook. Dear youth, dear children, let the word of God be your guidebook that in everything you may be molding in conduct and character 
according to its requirement. So everything that the youth is doing, even just going to fetch water, that obedience for your parents to do that which is necessary, it should be molded by the word of God. You should be doing it because you want to please God, you want to be true to God. That mopping of the house, doing everything, uh, and uh, forming good characters, being good to others, taking responsibilities, it, all that should be molded by the word of God, as the word of God, as the Bible or the word of God be your guide. The only way in which the Christian will be able to keep himself unspotted from worldly influence will be by searching the scriptures and by obeying the word of God to every, to the very latter. The only way in which the Christian will be able to keep himself unspotted from worldly influence will be by searching the scripture and by obeying the word of God to every latter. Satan is playing the game of life for every soul. Satan is uh, playing with our souls. But no one needs to be overcome by his deceptive reasoning. Those who knew consent to his sophistry will be deceived by his concepts. But if the truth of God regulates the life, if the truth of God regulates the life, if the word of God, in other words, regulates the life, it, will, it must be planted in the heart. The truth will produce true beauty in the soul that will reveal in the character. Wow. The truth will produce true beauty in the soul that will be revealed in the character. But if this result is attained, it will become the truths cultivated and cherished. The Bible is to be your standard. The living oracles of Jehovah are to be your guide. You are to dig for the truth as for the hidden treasures. You are to find where the treasure is and where you are to plow every inch of the field to get jewels. You are to work the mines of truth for new jewels for new gems, for new diamonds, and you will find them. As the true seeker after the truth, a dear youth, read the word and open his mind to and open uh, and opens his mind to receive the word. He longs after truth which is whole heart, with his whole heart. The love, the pity, the tenderness, the courtesy, the Christ Christian politeness, which will be the elements of heavenly mansion mushrooms that Christ has gone to prepare for those that love him, take possession of his soul. So we see the one who loves the truth, what possesses its soul, love, pity, tenderness, courtesy, Christian politeness, all these elements which are able to make us ready for the heavenly mansions with Christ when to prepare for us, uh, we can have it by consecrating ourselves to the word of God. And uh, we know that it is only the character that will take to heaven from this earth. And so we are going to form these characters by being faithful to the word of God, by uh, living by the word of God. Let the youth be taught to love the study of the Bible. Let the first place in our thoughts and affection be given to the books of books, for it contains knowledge which we we'll need above all, which will, for it contains knowledge which we need above all other knowledge. So above all other knowledge, we have the knowledge of the word of God, the Bible, which should take the first place in our thoughts and our affections. And this should be taught to youth. They should be taught to love the word of God. Finally, uh, in uh, Great Controversy 519, paragraph 2, Saturn well knows, this is quite interesting, Saturn well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer 
and searching of the scriptures will be overcomed by his attacks. Therefore, he invents every possible device to engross the mind. I don't know whether we, get, we got this. Satan knows that those who will be safe from his attacks, from his influence, from his snares, are those who are going to uh, search the word of God. They are going to search the scriptures as we have learned earlier. And then also be prayerful because searching of the, the word of God goes with prayer. And so for that reason, he invents every possible device to capture the mind, to engross the mind. And we will begin from there and uh, see really uh, how Satan is doing this in effectively to destroy the youths of this time by inventing every possible device. We speak of uh, some devices that use, that Satan has really invented, Satan has worked to capture the mind of the young, to be able to uh, neglect the studying of the word of God and pray. May God bless you. See you another time. We shall pray. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. You have been faithful to us today, and we really thank you. We are very sure that the enemy was not happy, and uh, I uh, would have done several things to disturb our meeting just as yesterday, but you proved to be faithful to us. You've answered our honest prayers, Lord. We want to thank you in a special way for that. We pray, Lord, that the remaining series will also be a success. As you give me good health, you bless those who are helping to see that this meeting be a success so that you will be done. I want to pray for the dear youths who will be following after this and who have followed, Lord, that they will see the need of consecrating themselves and uh, allowing your word to form part of their life so that all their characters will be transformed by your work. Because that is the only safety that we need to be able to finish your work to be able to go against the odds of the evil one in these last days. Bless your children. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.